As a caregiver, you have to think about what's going to happen when you're not there. All caregivers think of this, and it's a big worry, because how is your kid going to make it if you're not there to pick up the pieces when they need that? My name is Joelle Pouliot. I'm a journalist and a mental health advocate, and I also live with bipolar disorder. Over the past seven years, my family, but especially my parents, have been my primary caregivers. They've been with me in hospital rooms and doctor's offices. They've been in my home, helping me cook and clean and buy groceries. But they won't always be there. As a caregiver, you can feel overwhelmed by what you feel is needed of you today. But what's even more important is how you can help create a tomorrow that's healthier and better for everyone. I haven't thought about that very much. About what? About the future, about yeah. the, the, the far future, because there's too much to deal in the present. It's not uncommon for a caregiver of someone with mental illness to ignore the future. In my own life, it took years to get to a place where I wasn't afraid of what might happen in the next few weeks or months. But eventually, through work, support, therapy, and medication, I'm in a place where the fog has lifted and I can finally see a future. When I saw the River Creek, I was overcome by sadness for all the times I'd been to it last year and I was too depressed to enjoy it. Coming here, I thought I'd be scared to be alone in the forest, but instead I felt strong and independent. Later on, I think if they're continuing to have a caregiver role uh, with the person, there's that whole transitioning to what do we do, what is our role? You know, in, in other domains of medicine, this is more easily worked out. If you have surgery and they come home, they'll say, you know, check their temperature, look at their wounds, but it doesn't work the same way uh, when we're dealing with mental health issues. Most caregivers want their loved one to grow, to become independent and take ownership over their life. But coming to terms with the long-term impact of mental health can be really difficult. I think that another thing that families are going through without necessarily recognizing it is grief. I think that uh, when families recognize that this may be a long-term situation that may have ups and downs and so on and so forth, they have to come to terms with it. But yes, there's that transition of finally being able to sort of go, we have to back away a little bit so that we can have some of our life back as well. And oftentimes that's a tough one where again, we can try and work with caregivers to support them in saying, there is a boundary and don't feel guilty that you want a life. That's an appropriate thing for you to want to do. I think that this is really very important and this is part of the work that we are doing with caregivers to recognize that, you know, they have a role, but they also have to know how to retreat and how to help their loved ones to stand on their own feet and do what they can do on their own. It's an important part of recovery to stop doing so much as caregivers. Let these people live. Let let the person suffering with mental illness figure it out. They will figure it out. Planning for the future can feel impossible when you're drowning in the responsibilities of today. But one of the best things my caregivers and I did together was create a crisis plan, a list of steps and resources we put together during a period of good health. Oftentimes, the dialogue around a crisis plan can help people see what resources uh, are there. The internal resources are, can you self-soothe? Can you reground yourself? And the external resources are, who can I call? Do you have a crisis center's number? Do you have a friend's number? Do you have a backup friend's number? I think that um, it's important for patients to plan for the future, to believe in the future, to have hopes for the future. I think mental illness is not a death sentence. Talking to doctors, therapists, families, and their loved ones, it became clear that caregivers need four things to successfully plan for the future. First, they need to feel confident that they can step away and give their loved one independence to live their own life. Then, they need a crisis plan to help them feel that their loved one can cope with what life throws at them. Next, they need to know that the person can be financially secure, that they will have work or government support or some other way of paying their bills. And finally, they need hope. Hope that while things may get rocky again in the future, life can always be a little better. And you are in the, in the thick of mental illness, 
you very often lose hope. I think that it's critical that the families will carry the hope for you. And this is why they have to seek help, because if they can't carry the hope, we will carry the hope for them so they will be able to carry the hope for their loved ones. Sometimes it sounds a bit, you know, cliche and a bit of a slogan, you know, without hope, there's no hope.